Sun Tzu, or Sun Wu when using his birth name, was a general, military strategist, and philosopher. According to historians like Sima Qian, he was the author of the classic Sun Tzu Bing Fa, or in English, The Art of War. Sun Tzu was also an inspiration for Patrick Shanota and Oliver Hasler. For them, martial arts not only means combat, but also strategy, philosophy and family. Having still good relationships with their masters and colleagues from the previous organization, they decided to establish the Sun Wu Kung Fu Chinese Martial Arts Switzerland with schools in Basel and Zurich, where they can fulfill their vision of Chinese martial arts in connection with the philosophy and strategy of Sun Wu. Wing Chun Qi is one of the major branches in Southern Chinese martial arts. As almost all Southern styles, Wing Chun traces its roots back to the legendary abbot Qi Sim of the Southern Shaolin Temple. However, there are connections and similarities with other Southern systems like Fujian Wai Crane. Wing Chun Qin became famous worldwide through Bruce Lee and his teacher Yip Man, who was portrayed in several movies by Don Yen. Oliver Hustler started to learn Wing Chun in the later 90s, inspired by K1 legend Andy Hook. Very soon he started to train hard to become a better martial artist and often stayed in the school of his master until 11 in the evening. But then he still had homework to do, which often didn't let him sleep before 2 o'clock in the night. After some years, he started to assist his teacher and later became the new owner of the school when his teacher moved to France. Beside that, Oliver Hustler also started a fighting career in Sanda, which led him to two bronze medals at the World Wushu Championships 2005 and 2009 and the bronze medal at the European Wushu Championships in 2006. He also got some internet fame on YouTube with his lethal kick to the head at the Beijing Invitational Tournament during the Olympic Games 2008. Patrick Shanata, meanwhile, started to learn Wing Chun in the 90s with a teacher from the same organization in Basel. He was addicted soon to the art and invested a lot of his spare time in learning Wing Chun. He soon started to assist his teacher in children classes and became an assistant coach later. Later on, he also became the opportunity to replace a teacher from the same organization for a year and learned a lot about running a Wushu school. Unlike Oliver, he didn't start a fighting career, but dedicated himself to become a judge. He was the first Swiss to become an international standard judge, with achieving both EWUF and IWUF license. This gave him the opportunity to judge on international events and put him in the position of the chief referee and later the TC responsible for Sanda and Jingda in Switzerland. I started my Kung Fu training in the kids class. I went once in the kids class, but then my teacher offered me a possibility to already go to the adults. And um, I was absolutely crazy about it. So every second I could, I picked someone and tried to do some chi out. I tried to become, or I tried to train with anyone before the training. I tried to pick someone out after the training. So I think I was a real nightmare for the adults. I always was going behind them and asking for opportunity to train. It was the same when I was going to seminars. Everyone wanted to do a break, wanted to do a little bit of, uh, of erholung or recreation. It was the same in workshops or in seminars. Everyone wanted to do a break after several hours. 
and there was just one boy jumping around and asking everyone, do you want to do some cheese out? Do you want to do some cheese out? I think I was a real nightmare when I was younger. My first martial art was soccer. So I started playing soccer when I was six years old. My father was a soccer trainer, so there was no question about which sport I should start with. After eight years of soccer, I was looking for a new sport. I was looking for a new opportunity for a hobby. So I was going around trying different things like uh, rock and roll dancing, like ice hockey. And in the end, I landed in the Kung Fu school where I met my first Wing Chun teacher, Roger Baumgartner. I can remember the first lesson very well when I was standing there in something like a mabu. So my legs were shaking, I couldn't stand for half a minute. And he asked me to do different things with the left and the right hand while I should hold this position. I didn't understand how that should be possible. So after eight years of soccer, the legs were not so badly trained, but there was no chance to hold this mabu and then doing different things simultaneously with the hands. So this was one of my first impressions of Chinese martial arts and of how much I will have to learn in this field. I can pick up that point from Oli because in this time it was very intense for me too. I was in the martial arts school every time I could, so sometimes twice or three times a day. I was still in school and uh, learning something for my life, they told me. But I think I learned more in the martial arts school than in the normal school. And with the time, it was very natural that I helped my teacher out with teaching. So with the time, it was very natural that I helped him with the kids' classes. And with more and more experience, he also gave me the kids' classes to do on my own. So I was the whole time when I was not in school, in the other school, in the martial arts school. So my direct teacher in Basel, Roger Baumgartner, he was, a he was a student of Lex Reinhardt himself. So Lex was teaching in Zurich and my teacher Roger, he was teaching in Basel. And with the time he uh, didn't want to go on with his school, also due to some, to some health reasons. So he gave me the opportunity to took the school over. And this is how I became the director of the Ningmui Kung Fu School Basel in these times. So as I said before, my first martial art was soccer, but my first Chinese martial art was Yung Chun or Wing Chun. And um, with the time, I was also very interested in other styles. So I started to do a little bit of Tai Chi, I started a little bit of Shaolin Kung Fu, just to know, just to get more used and have more overview about this very wide and broad field of Chinese martial arts. And in 2004, um, I was able to do my first voyage to China. I was there for becoming international Sanda judge. So there was a referee course um, organized by the International Wufu Federation. And I went there like for one week for the referee course. And then I took the chance and went also there to learning some Yichuan. So I started with Yichuan already in Switzerland, but it was just in Beijing when I first met my teacher, Yao Chengrong which uh, later I also become his disciple. So 2004 was my first China visit, and then in 2006 we went there together with a big group from the Ningmui Kung Fu organization. It was, I think, about 30 people, more or less, with members from different schools, from Basel, Zurich, from Bern. And uh, we went there for training a lot of Yichuan, and also, of course, a little of sightseeing and uh, learning something about Chinese culture. And I think this was one of the turning points in our relationship because it was the first possibility to really have a lot of time together. So also doing a lot of um, interesting and sometimes crazy experiences in China. So as young people in China, everything was new, everything was different, but it was very, very interesting. I started my martial arts journey in 1999 during my high school years. A school friend took me to a free Wing Chun trial session in the Ningmui Gong Fu School. I was very happy with the training and the new home I found. After a year of training, I wanted to test my progress in a competition. Sadly, it wasn't a great success. But I was hooked by my new hobby and I began to train five to six times a week.
My enthusiasm didn't stay unnoticed, and my teacher at the time, Lex Reinhardt, asked me if I wanted to be an assistant to the other instructors. And I qualified to join the national team of the Swiss Wushu Federation. This was the first time where my traditional Wing Chun technique met Sanda. After my first European Championship in Russia in 2004, I started to intensify my Sanda training. But I never stopped my Wing Chun training, even though these two styles were technically very different. I always could use the Wing Chun principles in my competition. During my first few years as an assisting instructor, I was able to look deeper in the whole world of Wing Chun and my new family. It was during an instructor training weekend where I met my older Gong Fu brother Patrick, who had a deep impact on my martial arts way. In 2003, I finished my instructor training and became assistant manager of the Ningmui Gongfu School in Zurich. And after another three years of education and studies in Wing Chun, Qigong and Sanda, I assumed the role as a headmaster of the school in Zurich and started teaching martial arts professionally. The bond between Patrick, who became headmaster in Basel, and me grew stronger every year. He was the one I could talk to if I have any problem in any situation, martial arts or otherwise. The next 10 years, from 2006 to 2016, were filled with Sanda competitions around the world. I became the first medalist of Switzerland in the World Wushu Championship, and I was the first Swiss Sanda fighter who won the World Cup. And I qualified for the 2008 Wushu Tournament at the Olympic Games. During all my over 200 fights in my career, I never lost my traditional roots. I even started with Chen Tai Chi Chuan under Urs Krebs in 2012 to ensure my basic traditional martial arts skills and also improve my fighting style. In 2017, after 18 years of growing under the same roof, it was time to evolve once more. Patrick and I decided to found our own martial arts association, the Sun Wu Switzerland, named after Sun Tzu Bing Fa. After 18 years of uh, practicing and teaching Kung Fu, I, oh, I wanted to start my own concepts to create something new and uh, like the birds, um, when they were kids they stayed in the nest and they wanted to fly on their own, so I wanted to do something new and uh, Patrick joined me on this way, he also began to do his own things 
and we started our own organization. And we are still very thankful for all our teachers and we are still in contact and exchanging things with them. So it was not like a break, it was just like a new start on the roots of the old things, which is very important for me. We still have good relationship and still exchanging things. So maybe about the name of our own organization, Sun Wu Kung Fu. Um, we are referring to Sun Tzu Bing Fa, so the art of war, written by the legend Sun Tzu, which is also um, called Sun Wu in Chinese, so it was his family name. And one of our main ideas are, like in Sun Tzu Bing Fa, know yourself, know your counterpart, know the circumstances. Because for us, martial art is much more than fighting. It's a lot about culture, it's about, a lot about health, psychology, and um, a lot of things coming together in traditional martial art in our point of view, how we understand Chinese and traditional martial art. About laughing, Chinese martial arts is something very, very serious for me because it's very deep. But if you don't laugh in training, there's something missing because you need this kind of um, spontaneity of openness, of flowing of emotions. So I once were having a workshop with a Xingyi master from China and he always told me, stop laughing, it's serious, it's about war, it's about fighting. I absolutely agree. It's not playing around, it's martial art, it's self-defense. But still, training progress should be playful, joyful. So if we don't laugh from time to time, something is not correct for me. So we take it very serious with laughing in my school. Another process was our logo, our beautiful logo. We are very proud of that. And it was a hell of a pro process. Um, in the end, there are uh, three parts, like heaven, earth, and the human being that uh, represents one aspect of our logo. Then I also remember the crossroad when the streets are crossing because you have like, um, the Chinese signs which is giving you one line and then Sun Wu with Latin words giving you the other line. So we have crossing of cultures and it's not about clashing of cultures. Because in Sun Wu, we don't want to be more Chinese than Chinese people. We have our own uh, tradition, we have our own ideas here in the West, and we try to incorporate the best from the West and from the East. So it's not only about Chinese ideas or um, concepts in teaching. We try to absorb what is useful also in this process of teaching and um, bringing the best from the two worlds together. And another thing which is hidden a little bit in the logo is also we are living in Switzerland. So the flag of Switzerland is the white cross in the red flag. And you also have this idea of the cross which is hidden a little bit. So because it's Sun Wu, Switzerland. I had a 20 year long career as a fighter in championships and I was very influenced by all the styles I did, like Tai Chi, like Yong Chun Chuan, and uh, like Yi Chuan, and all the other styles I could practice with uh, Patrick. He influenced me in this uh, very much with the traditional styles, and I could bring all the different mechanics to To a functional way. To a yourself. functional way, yes, for, for fighting. And that was that's one part why I teach also some traditional styles, not just on not just the, the modern part of it, like the Sanda. From my point of view, to see the whole story of Chinese martial arts, all the different parts should come together. So we're training meditation. We have uh, forms which are bringing us the root of a style. We have combat applications. 
we have um, spiritual training, so a lot of things, health aspects, qigong. In every traditional kung fu style, there should be some qigong. If it's teached or not is another question, but I think in every style there has been some qigong to build up the root, to build up the body. Then we have body conditioning for fighting, and if you have a lack of one of these pieces, it's always not round. So to do really traditional martial art, all the pieces should come together. Now in teaching and daily classes, of course, you have students, they more enjoy the forms. Another enjoy more the application. But we really try to encourage them to get used to all parts, so to really profit of this process of bringing all things together. Hello guys, it's nice to see you, have you here with us, uh, it's a pleasure to, uh, um, to tell you something about us. You know, the thing is recording. Oh, I see, the red the light red is light already is on. <laughs> the red light, you see, it's like, like our logo. Sunu action, eins klappe, eins die erste. Sun. <laughs> Sun. Mit Sun. Sun. Ich habe mal ein paar Jingli an, oder? Das kann man nachher gut reinschneiden. Mhm, egal wo. Genau. Ich bin. Ich hab's gesagt. Sorry. Das ist vielleicht nicht die beste Idee, gewesen, das nach einem Tagseminar zu machen. Ich sag das ja. ja. I am already trying to get in the mood. I can't even laugh. That's like Roger Federer and Nadal. Stepan still exchanging things. Liar. Lach not so blöd, bleib mal ernst. Mann. We take it very serious with laughing in my school. <laughs> you don't laugh in my classes. Ah. No serious, no laughing. Just punishment. Urs, stop laughing, please. Das ist mir jetzt, das habe ich schön gefunden, das erklärt. You also have to sign like a belt, and we want to do black belt <laughs> for a better world. <laughs> it's like the Sanda. Liar. <laughs> oh, I needed the money. Say something about the Sunu. <laughs> I didn't do anything. This time it wasn't my fault. As usually. Normally it's not my fault. It's what? always your fault. You're pointing something at me. Stay focused. <laughs> so let me say something about the Sunu bear. Um, <laughs> not it's, it's not a bear, it's a bear. <laughs> Like the bear and the bear. You can say bear. Bear? Yeah, it's like the bear. <laughs> if you say bear, it's almost like bear. Let me say something about the beer. <laughs> Let me say something about the beer. <laughs> yeah. bear, 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 bar. Bear. 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 Say bear. Bear. It's a bear. Bear. It's a bear. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's a bear. You can really say it's like Swiss German, a bear, a bear. It's a bear.